pitching, but not Friday night. Bottom of second, Jeremy Gonzalez pitching. Reggie Sanders unloads a three-run blast, his second of the year. He was two for four with four RBI. That makes it three-nothing Reds. Still second now. The Reds now leading when Jim Riggleman has seen enough and pulls Gonzalez. Don Wenger, the new pitcher, and he walks Willie Green. Dimitri Young scores at six-nothing Reds. Cuts pitching coach Phil Regan very nervous. Next batter, bases still loaded. Wenger walks Sanders. Sanders four RBI in the second inning. Eddie Tobbins, he scores seven-nothing Reds. Then Eduardo Perez singles to right. Two more runs scored, capping off the nine-run second inning. The Reds sent 14 batters to the plate in the inning. Nine-nothing Reds at this point. Gonzalez not happy as he responsible for eight of the nine runs in the second inning, and he takes the loss as the Reds now have won three straight and moved over the 500 mark for the first time since the fifth game of the season as the loss ended the Cubs' four-game winning streak. The Reds had not scored nine runs in an inning since May 16, 1993. The three-game set, and Nagel looking good early. Blowing the fastball by Derek Bell, one of Nagel's five strikeouts. Bell 0 for four on the night. Then top of the fifth, one nothing Braves. A runner on first. Eddie Perez already one home run. Goes deep up of Jose Lima again. A two-run shot this time. He was two for three with three RBI. Braves up 3 nothing. Bottom of eight now. Astros down 3-1 with Craig Biggio on third. Dennis Martinez in for Nagel, and Moises Alou hits one deep to left. Is it going to get out? No, not quite. Gerald Williams makes the catch on the warning track as Martinez saves it for Nagel. First save this season for Martinez as Nagel improved to 5-1. and one. One out. And Gonzalez grounds out to Omar Vizquel at short. His 50th RBI in only 40 games. That's the fastest since Joe Carter did it back in 1994. Bottom of the first now, David Justice takes the John Burkett pitch over Gonzalez's head and right. He was 3 for 5. That's Justice's ninth home run of the year. And that ties the game at 1. And that a tough night for Rangers hitters. Right gets Kevin Elster looking at the outside. He Then Gonzalez swinging. Gonzalez was 0 for 6 right there. Then Elster swinging in the 7th. And then Jose Mason and gets Gonzalez swinging at the high heat in eight. And then Mike Jackson gets Elster with the slider in the tenth. Eric Plunk in. And he gets Gonzalez swinging in the eleventh. Gonzalez and Elster go a combined 0 for 11 with strikeouts and a lot of zeros on the scoreboard at the Jake. Brian Giles leading off the 14th and a 1 for 26 slump. Not anymore as that is gone deep to center field. It's ninth of the year. And that gives the tribe the win as Giles ends a tense four the White Sox game instead. Frank Thomas, who was one for four here, grounds to third, but Russ Davis boots the potential inning-ending double uh, play. And the next batter, Albert Bell, makes Bill Swift and the Mariners pay as he hits the three-run blast to left. He was one for four with three RBI. The White Sox now up three-nothing. Bottom of second now. Swift tries to pick off Mike Cameron at first. The throw hits Cameron in the face. Charlie O'Brien would score as Cameron gets checked out by the trainer. He would stay in the game. And Look at this, same inning. Swift tries to pick him off again. He runs back to the baseball, covering his face as Swift got booed for trying to pick him off again. Bottom of eight now, Mike Caruso flies to short center field. Ken Griffey Jr., oh, makes the great catch. But the White Sox are going on to win this one. It's Jamie Navarro allowed seven hits over seven in a third innings to win his third straight decision and beat trouble. Bottom of the fifth, bases loaded, nobody out. Mets up 2-1, JT Snow. The stretch. Hits a no. shot back up the middle. Ray Ordonez, the one hops it, throws from the ground to second for one over the first for the double play. Bill Miller does score, though, to tie the game at two, but a great play by Ordonez. Now, bottom of the seventh, Jeff Kent at bat. Barry Bonds tries to steal second throw from Alberto Castillo's in time, but Bonds is called safe. You know why? Take another look. Bayergo misses the tag, but the throw was there in plenty of time, so that would be costly because Kent hits a double down the right field line, and Bonds, who should have been caught stealing, instead scores the winning run. So when a pitcher's duel, Hershiser comes out on top as he tossed seven innings of four-hit ball. Comes into the game hitting 377. Bottom of the fifth, though, Gwynn twists his right knee on the swing right there. He would have to leave the game. He will have an MRI on Saturday. Bottom of seven, Greg Vaughn. That is gone. Twelfth home run of the year. Fifth home run of the last seven games for him to make it 6-4 Padres. Then Trevor Hoffman to close it out. Doug Glanville pops to right. Kilvio Virus is there. But it's off his glove as Glanville will wind up at third. Next batter, Greg Jeffries pop up here, and that's dropped by Greg Vaughn. Glanville scores. Seven, six pods, two outs now. Tying run at first when Hoffman's pitching the dirt. Pinch runner Kevin Sefcic tries to go to second, but Carlos Hernandez throws him out. And the Padres hang on to get the win, and he's pumped up about that as the Pods won their third straight game as Trevor Hoffman worked the ninth for his 12th save. And the Twins, but first Joe Torre and company. Observe a moment of and silence for Frank Sinatra. To, to the ball game, top of the third, Andy Pettit 
to Ron Coomer, and Coomer takes him out of the ballpark. Seventh of the year for Ron, Twins up 6-3. And after finishing up the seventh inning, Andy Pettit had words with Yanks pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre. Pettit did not return. Bottom of the seventh, Mike Trombley facing Derek Jeter. And Jeter deep to left center. That is his seventh home run of the year. Jeter has an 11-game hitting streak. Yanks only down one. Now in the bottom of the ninth, two outs for Paul O'Neill. Denny Hawking gets it at second. Rick Aguilera gets the save, his eighth of the year. Twins win. So the Yanks have lost back-to-back -back games for the first time since the first week of this season. Meanwhile, the Twins have won four in a row for the first time since last September. Fox wouldn't need them. Against the Royals, rookie third baseman Lou Merloni homers over the green monster off Jose Rosado. 5 nothing Boston, first Major League home run for Merloni. Tim Wakefield pitching well and got defensive support from Merloni. Playing third, he robs Jose Offerman. Wakefield's knuckleball dancing all night long. Jeff King. The latest victim, one of six strikeouts on the evening for Wakefield, five straight wins for Wakefield. Meanwhile, 27-year-old rookie Lou Merloni called up when Garcia Parra got hurt. Homer over the place, runners at the corners, two outs in the first. Mike Stanley singles, Tony Fernandez doubles, Darren Fletcher singles, Sean Green, Carlos Delgado, Stanley Fernandez eventually score. Four nothing, Jays Hill, bad night. Five hits, seven earned runs, five walks. Pat Henkin did much better. Frank Bullock lining the left. And watch Jose Canseco make a catch. Wow, two down. Next batter in the second. Matt Walbeck goes out, one of five strikeouts for Henkin. And he's still strong here in the fourth. Jim Edmonds lines to second, and Tony Fernandez goes up and gets it. Henkin retired the first 16 batters he faced. He had a perfect game for five and a third innings. Figure out who to play. Here's Top of the Nino. first, rookie Brady, Brady Raggio gets wrapped. Edgar Renteria, then Cliff the Floyd. The Derek Floyd Lee follows with a single. Yeah, Mark Kotze, next game. batter, also and singles. The the and then there's Greg Zahn catching in place of Charles Johnson. Game. Another single. The yeah, hits kept coming. Marlins set a around. team record and with and nine hits in nine consecutive at bats. Edgar Renteria completed the string of hits. And then finally, Meadows with a base hit in St. Louis. Edgar line drive and another hit. That's Renteria there in the bottom of the eighth. Now eight to six Marlins when we pick it up. Two out and a runner on. Ray Langford drives one deep to left and Cliff Floyd goes back and Floyd makes the catch up against the wall. Charles Johnson only wondering what his future will be. We know now he's a Dodger. The Marlins hold on to win it. With that team record nine straight hits in a seven run first Dodger bench. L.A. up 1-0 here in the third when Shane Andrews his hits his ninth home run of the year. We are tied at one apiece. Miguel Batista pitching for the Expo, striking out Tom Prince, who caught in place of Piazza. Prince was one for three in the game, but the game was really Castro against Batista. A little Cuban history there for you. Second inning, Batista strikes out Castro swinging. Then Batista gets him again in the eighth. Castro, the trifecta. Castro played for Todd Zeal. Batista handles Castro, thwarts any revolution the Dodgers were thinking about on Friday evening. The Expos win. Miguel Batista is a rookie, picked up his first major league victory. Field this season, top of the first, facing Dave Nielsen. Nielsen lashes a double down the left field line. He had two RBI doubles. This one scores Jeff Cirillo, and the Brewers build a 3-0 lead. But top of the second, Rockies with some defense now. Steve Woodard pops up the bunt. Todd Helton dives and then throws for the out. Nice play by Helton. Top of the seventh now, Jeremy Burnitz facing Bobby Jones, and he gets jammed. Cues one to third. Vinny Castilla here misplays it, and the ball gets by him. Al Reyes scores 8-2 Brewers. Bottom of nine now, Rockies down 8-5. Runners on the corners. Larry Walker, the tying run, facing Mike Myers. Strikes out swinging. And the Rockies now have lost five straight games, and they're just 4-14 four and 14 at Quinson Diamondbacks. Bottom of the first, Devon White on second, Matt Williams at the plate. And Williams takes Francisco Cordova deep to left, a two-run blast. Diamondbacks go up 3-0. The Pirates' Kevin Young had a frustrating night against Jeff Supon. His first at-bat strikes out looking, and he would have a few words for the umpire. And no good, though. But then after flying out in the fifth, Young up again in the seventh. Taps it in front of the plate. Thinks it's foul, but gets called out by umpire Jeff Kellogg. Young disagrees. He was ejected from the game. Then Supon pitching his first complete game of his career. Helping out Brent Breedy with a tag at first as the Diamondbacks get the win. As Jeff Supon tossed a four-hitter as the Diamondbacks beat the Pirates. So the D-backs now snapped in. And Grieve lines one to center field. Brian Hunter reaches and can't get it. The ball is going to bounce around. Grieve is going to run around the bases. Can he get an inside the park home run? 
Well, it would help if he didn't slip as he went around third base. And you know what? Ben Grieve down again, up again, and after a short rundown, he's tagged out. Top of the fourth, ace down 3 1. Jason Giambi. This time, Brian Hunter, though, is it able to make the catch? Top of the night, tags up 8 3. After two Detroit batters were hit earlier in the game, Detroit reliever Doug Burkow hits Ricky Henderson. And Henderson, not happy, stalks to the mound. Both benches empty, pushing, shoving words. Burkow got tossed out of the game. But his team won. Frank Castillo combined with five relievers on a six hitter. The Tigers won their season high third straight ball game. Jason Giambi drove in two runs for the A's without getting a hit. Oh. First, Kevin Stocker hits Shut it to right. He is off and Stocker running. The ball ends up in the corner. Ledesma, once an Oriole farmhand, comes around to score. Triple for Stocker. Double raise up 1-0. And the Ledesma view from the warehouse, not so good. Stocker. Bottom of the eighth. Birds down 3-1. Nobody out. Two guys on for Robbie Alomar. Takes the pitch from Jim Messier, called strike three, so we have one out. Wilson Alvarez hoping Messier can hold on to the lead. Harold Baines pitch hitting. Hits it to Fred McGriff. One out, but over to first, and Harold Baines actually beat out a throw. Two outs now. Messier almost out of the jam. Rafael Palmero lines it up the middle. Stocker grabs it and steps on second. The Orioles go down 4-1. to one. Alvarez picked up his first win in five starts, challenging bird hitters mostly with his fastball.